Greetings and salutations. Today we will be covering the killing of Dubani Escobar on the fateful day of April 9th, 2022. A young woman by the name of Dubani Susana Escobar Basarud vanished without a trace. She was an 18 year old and an aspiring law student hailing from Monterrey in Nuevo Leon. However, her life was tragically cut short when her story took a dark turn. 13 days after her disappearance, on April 22nd, a grim discovery was made. Her remains were found in a cistern, concealed within a motel, located in General Escobado, a municipality within the Monterrey metropolitan area. The state of her body bore visible marks of violence, revealing a horrific fate had befallen her. News of Escobar's disappearance quickly spread like wildfire throughout social media after a photograph of her standing on a road on the night of her disappearance went viral. This evoked a powerful response within Mexico, stirring unrest and a sense of collective outrage. The Nuevo León prosecutor's office swiftly took charge of the investigation, treating Escobar's case as femicide. However, the tragic event unfolded against a backdrop of a larger crisis. It had been noticed that an alarming number of women had gone missing in Nuevo León and throughout the rest of Mexico. Escobar was the adopted daughter of Mario Escobar and his wife Dolores. She had dreams and aspirations which were tragically cut short. As a law student, she was said to embody the potential for a promising future. Her untimely demise echoed a wave of growing disappearances plaguing the country, particularly affecting girls and adolescents between the ages of 10 through 19. These statistics painted a chilling picture of a pervasive problem. In the past 50 years, a staggering 1,790 women had been reported missing in Nuevo León alone. Shockingly, a large majority of the cases were reported after 2010, pointing to an alarming escalation. In the year of Escobar's death, officials would report 52 documented female victims of heinous crimes in Nuevo León alone. To better understand the context in which the tragedy unfolded, it is essential to examine the landscape at the time. Samuel Garcia held the position of governor of Nuevo León. Andres Millajes Rivera served as the mayor of Ciudad Escabado, and Gustavo Adolfo Guerrero Gutierrez held the role of attorney general. These individuals were entrusted in upholding justice and ensuring the safety of the population, making the case all the more significant in terms of accountability and in the pursuit of justice due to their stance on criminality. The investigation into Escobar's untimely death would continue as a part of the disturbing pattern of violence against women which has been noticed to come to a crescendo and remains a pressing concern. The perplexing case surrounding Escobar took a chilling turn as more details emerged about the events leading up to her disappearance and her eventual untimely demise. On the evening of April 8th, 2022, Escobar attended a party at the esteemed Quinta Diamante estate in General Escobado accompanied by two of her friends. As the night unfolded, Escobar's behavior seemed to take a rather strange turn. Deviating from her usual demeanor, accounts from witnesses reveal that Escobar would become increasingly erratic throughout the course of the evening. A heated altercation would ensue, leading to her seeking refuge within the confines of the men's bathroom, which led to her locking herself away from prying eyes. It was during this time that her friends would grow concerned and they would eventually make the decision to call for a driver to ensure her safe return home. It would not be until the early hours of April 9th, after 1.20 in the morning, that the driver arrived to pick up Escobar. Security footage captured a troubling scene as the driver and Escobar would engage in a heated argument within the confines of the vehicle. Later, the driver would explain that he was attempting to gather crucial information such as her home address or her guardian's contact number in order to ensure 
her safe return home. However, Escobar's anger and refusal to provide these details escalated the situation, leading to an uncomfortable encounter in which she had allegedly roped the driver. At 4.25 on kilometer 15.5 of the Via Numacana and Via a Nuevo Laredo Highway, located in the Nueva Castilla neighborhood, Escobar abruptly exited the vehicle. The driver, concerned for her well-being, engaged in a conversation with Escobar's friend, attempting to discuss the particular circumstances that had unfolded. Accompanying their conversation was a photograph that the driver had captured of Escobar standing alone on the desolate highway. Little did they know that this would be the last visual of Escobar's presence. Later, Escobar's pleas for help would be met with silence as she approached the Alcosa Transportation Offices at 4.30. Security camera footage depicts her navigating the surroundings and her presence is marked by a palpable sense of desperation. Determined to find assistance, Escobar then directed her steps towards the Nueva Castilla Motel, which was captured by subsequent surveillance footage. The disconcerting chain of events prompted Escobar's father, Mario, to report his daughter's disappearance to the Nuevo León State Attorney's General's Office. In a desperate attempt to locate her, a missing persons report was disseminated through social networks and media channels, accompanied by the haunting iconic photograph taken by the driver on the deserted highway. The days of agonizing wait ended on April 22nd, 13 days after her initial disappearance. Escobar's decomposing remains would be discovered submerged in the murky waters of the Nueva Castilla Motel's cistern. The macabre nature of the discovery sent shockwaves throughout the community and well beyond, intensifying the urgency to unravel the mystery surrounding her untimely demise. As the investigation pressed on, numerous questions remain unanswered. One of these is what led to Escobar's erratic behavior during that unfortunate evening. Who was responsible for the violence inflicted upon her are amongst a myriad of other questions that beg to be answered. The investigation into her mysterious death intensified as unsettling discoveries which challenged the initial conclusion surrounding her demise arose. Following the widespread media coverage of Escobar's disappearance, a special operation led by the Nuevo León State's Attorney General's Office was launched, joining forces with the determined efforts of concerned citizens in a strange twist. The search for Escobar led to the discovery of five additional adolescents who had gone missing, shedding light on the harrowing reality of the pervasive crisis which was plaguing the region. As authorities worked tirelessly to unravel the interconnected web of disappearances, they continued to push forward. That is, until the eventual discovery of Escobar's body. A government-conducted autopsy hastily concluded that her tragic demise was a result of the accidental fall into the cistern, leading to a fatal head injury and her subsequent drowning. However, this explanation failed to quell the deep-seated doubts harbored by Escobar's father, who remains steadfast in his quest for truth. Consequently, he would go on to commission a second independent autopsy, driven by the desire to uncover the full extent of the atrocities inflicted upon his beloved daughter. The revelations brought forth by the second autopsy sent shockwaves throughout Mexico. It exposed the grim reality that was concealed just beneath the surface, revealing undeniable evidence of both assault and physical abuse inflicted upon Escobar just prior to her demise. The cause of death Contrary to the initial assertion, was determined to be a deep cranial contusion, which underscored the heinous violence that she endured in her final moments. As the investigation pressed on, numerous perplexing facets continued to baffle both authorities and the family seeking closure. The origins of Escobar's sudden and uncharacteristic behavior on the night of her disappearance still remains shrouded in uncertainty. Speculation looms as multiple individuals and, and groups suggest possibilities ranging from the influence of intoxicating substances such as alcohol or drugs to external forces that may have exerted their control over her vulnerable state. Furthermore, 
the identity of the perpetrator responsible for these heinous crimes remains elusive. As investigators comb through a labyrinth of evidence desperate to close this case, the specter of an unknown assailant looms ominously throughout the region. As the investigation into Escobar's death continues, her father, Mario Escobar, remains in constant contact with the Nuevo Leon State Prosecutor's Office. Driven by an unwavering determination to uncover the truth behind his daughter's demise. In a revealing interview, Mario divulged startling information regarding the evidence that was presented to him and his wife by the prosecutor's office. Amongst the videos shared, one particular recording captured a tense confrontation between Escobar and her friends mere hours before vanishing. Mario Escobar was taken aback by the disturbing scene unfolding before his eyes. In one of the recordings, he witnessed the distressing act of aggression as one of his daughter's friends forcefully yanked her hair while departing the party. The gravity of the altercation, which remained undisclosed until the interview, raised profound questions about the events that transpired, potentially shedding light on the circumstances that led to the abandonment of his daughter. Further accounts from Mario Escobar shed light on the subsequent events that unfolded on the fateful night. His daughter's companions sought the aid of a taxi driver. It was Juan David who assumed responsibility and was the one to capture the last known photograph of Escobar's daughter. Standing alone on the road, in a distressing turn of events, there was alleged sexual harassment she potentially endured during the taxi ride. However, it was deemed unworthy of pursuit by the state prosecutor's office, in part due to the corroboration of the taxi driver, along with the conversations that were shared through texts potentially clearing him. With these revelations in mind, Mario Escobar puts forth a theory, suggesting that the harassment served as a catalyst for his daughter's subsequent disappearance, underscoring the potentially sinister motives for the events that unfolded that night. He posits that the photograph was taken by the taxi driver, ostensibly as an alibi. His theory casts doubts on the true sequence of events, which further complicate the narrative surrounding his daughter's tragic fate. Supposedly, he believes that following her departure from the taxi, Dabani made a distressed phone call, seeking solace or assistance from her friends. However, her attempts to reach out were met with silence as her calls would go unanswered. Mario Escobar expresses the anguish he felt upon learning of this abandonment, hinting at the underlying tensions or untold incidents that transpired during the ill-fated party. Afterwards, desperate for help, Devani turned to the Transportes Alcosa company seeking refuge. However, this call for aid would also go unanswered. Adding another layer to the case, two crucial videos capturing her departure from the company inexplicably went missing, raising suspicions of internal tampering. The timing of these missing recordings coincides with the moments she vanished from sight, obscuring potential crucial evidence, which could have unraveled the mystery. More Moreover, there exists a conspicuous absence of physical evidence establishing the Bonnie's entry into the Nueva Castilla Motel, the chilling location to where her lifeless body was found. The motel, situated in close proximity to the premise of the Attorney General's office, claims that no staff were present in the area at the time. However, Mario Escobar dismisses this explanation, expressing disbelief at the suggestion and urging authorities not to underestimate his intelligence. To further understand understand the questions surrounding the case, one must look at the timeline. Starting on the night of April 8th, Dabani Escobar attended a gathering at the Quinta Venceria, which was a lavish estate nestled in the Nueva Castilla neighborhood. However, upon further scrutiny of the case, it came to light that the venue had hosted a party from April 7th to April 10th prompting clarifications regarding the events of her disappearance. According to her friends Alejandra de Sari and their cousin Yvonne, supposedly Escobar had exhibited aggressive behavior inside the party, leading them to decide to leave early in order to ensure their safety. They arranged for a driver who operated through a ride-hopping app to pick her up. 
Then, later, in the Monterrey Nuevo Laredo Highway, events would continue. Reluctantly, the Bonnie had entered the vehicle. However, her anger supposedly persisted, resulting in the encounter with the driver. Faced with the escalating situation, the driver opted to pull over at kilometer 15 of the Monterrey Nuevo Laredo Highway, a notorious stretch of road known ominously as the Road of Death. Due to the alarming number of unsolved disappearances it has witnessed over the years, in an attempt to provide evidence of his account, the driver would take a photograph of Miss Escobar at this location. This sparked a flurry of conflicting versions of the story, casting doubt on the actions of the Bani's friends and launching a social media campaign which would accuse them of abandoning her on the treacherous road. Conflicting narratives further muddled the investigation, leaving both authorities and relatives grappling with uncertainty. However, subsequent revelations revealed that law enforcement personnel from Nuevo León had maintained a presence outside the Alcoa Transportation Company where Debani was last seen, as evidenced by videos obtained by the prosecutor's office. The Alcoa Transportation Company, situated just a few meters away from the alleged party venue and across the street from where the taxi driver had left Debani, is where the young woman would seek refuge, hoping to find assistance. However, surveillance footage mysteriously failed to capture her departure even though it captured her entry into the premises. However, it must be noted that cameras from a nearby hotel captured the moments when Dabani disembarked from the vehicle that purportedly had intended to take her home. Subsequently, she crossed to the other side of the road, covering a distance of at least 20 meters. Ultimately, these cameras did prove that she arrived at the transportation company. The next point of interest is the Nueva Castilla Motel. Remarkably enough, there exists almost no physical evidence confirming the Bonnie's entry into the Nuevo Castilla Hotel proper, which is positioned in close proximity to the facilities of the Attorney General's office. Curiously enough, there is some rather strange videos which seem to contest this. On the night of April 21st, a woman's body was discovered at the motel, leading authorities to speculate it might have been Tabani's. And as luck would have it, it was her body. However, to this day, the enigma surrounding this case continues to confound many. Speculation around this case looms with possibilities ranging from the influence of an intoxicating substance, such as alcohol or a myriad of drugs, being either actively or forcefully ingested by Dabani, to external forces exerting control through threats or coercion, leading to her vulnerable state. Furthermore, the identity of the perpetrator responsible for this crime remains elusive, yet even as the search for truth progresses, haunting questions still linger, particularly around the initial autopsy. Were the inconsistencies between that and the secondary autopsy a tragic misstep born out of incompetence, or could it have been tainted by the insidious grip of corruption? The possibility that vital evidence was tampered with or overlooked cannot be ignored. This casts a chilling shadow over the integrity of the investigation as a whole. Sadly, the heart-wrenching case seems no closer to being solved. If you remained with me until the end, I thank you, and I do hope you stay tuned and subscribe for more content.